What is up guys? Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com and I have a huge announcement for you. In my most popular course, you will learn how to create RPG and first-person shooter multiplayer games. And you can get that course at a huge discount. And this is not the best part. The best part is that I have created a special coupon code and when you use it to enroll in the course, you will automatically be enrolled in my giveaway competition and you will get a chance to win some cool prizes. What are those prizes? Well, first place is gonna get a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place is gonna get an iMac 27 inch with Retina 5K display. And third place is gonna get a 13 inch MacBook Pro. All you have to do to enroll in this competition is enroll in the course and link to it is in the description below. You will also find another link to the video where I explain about the giveaway competition in more depth. In short, I will record myself drawing the winners and sending them their prizes depending on which places they are or they win first, second or third. So we'll see me sending these MacBook Pros and you will see me announcing the winners and I will post that on my YouTube channel. So again, first prize will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second prize is 27 inch iMac with 5K Retina display. And third place is 13 inch MacBook Pro. What is up guys, Fire here from awesometoots.com. In the previous video, we created our flag obstacle, which contains the squirrel that is running left and right. And we solved that in the previous video and we saved it as a prefab. So now what we want to do is create the functionality inside of our BG mover script. So this one right here, so that it spawns obstacles when it repositions the bounce. But before that, what I'm going to do is select the side boundaries and create an empty game object, which is going to be the child of side boundaries. And I am simply going to set its position at 3.5. And this is going to be the right spawner. So this is going to be the right spawner. Or this is where we are going to spawn our obstacles on the right side. I'm just quickly going to tag it here with this tag. So it is available right here when you click on this icon. So let me just select none. And you see this cube icon right here. You can click on it and select one of these icons. So I'm going to tag it like this duplicate it and this is going to be the left spawner. So this one instead of right, it's going to be left. And I'm going to set it at X negative 3.5 and tag it with the orange one. I'm also going to select both of these and set their Z axis at negative two. So now I'm going to duplicate them and simply put them right here to be below our side boundaries one. Now their X axis is going to be the same Y axis will be set to zero. So select both of these, set the Y axis to zero so that it moves them right here above or where our next boundaries are. So I'm going to duplicate these now and put them below side boundaries two. And I am going to rename them to right and left spawner. And I am going to select them, set the Y axis at zero so that they go right here. And again, duplicate these two and put them right below side boundaries three. Let me just rename them side spawner like this below this one side spawner. And I am gonna put them at Y to be equal to zero. X is gonna be the same. So for the right spawner, it will be 3.5 for the left spawner, negative 3.5 and their Y axis will be the same which will make them at the exact same position under every parent game object. So now we can go inside of our script, which is BG mover. And right here on the top, we can create a public, so public game object array of enemies and a public game object array of spawn positions. This is where we are going to drag and drop our enemies and where we are going to drag and drop our well spawn position. So before we continue, we need to do just that. Select side boundaries and here for spawn positions, set the size to two, drag and drop the left and the right spawner. 
Now in element zero, first we are gonna put the right spawner. So element zero will be right spawner, then the left spawner. Now for side boundaries one, two, and three, we're also gonna set the side or spawn position size two. Now don't put these. So you see this right spawner here. Don't put it to be right here for the side boundaries one. So don't put them right there. You need to put their appropriate children. So right spawner that is under side boundaries one will go here and left spawner will be here. And for the side boundaries two, its right spawner will be here. Pay attention which ones I'm dragging so that you don't make a mistake. And this one I'm gonna put right here, side boundaries, and here I'm gonna put the right spawner, and here I'm gonna put his left spawner. So they're appropriate children, this is really important. Don't mix it up, don't put this right spawner to be right here for the side boundaries three. Put the appropriate spawners for the appropriate parents. Now I'm also gonna select side boundaries, all four of them, so one, two, and three, and side boundaries and here for the enemies we're gonna set the size to one because currently we only have the flag enemy so i'm gonna click on this little circle here and well select the flag enemy which is our current obstacle that we have or the only obstacle that we currently have so what are we gonna do now we we're gonna go here inside of the bg mover and right here below our reposition script we are gonna say void spawn enemies now the spawn enemies will be called right here so right below when we reposition so when we reposition our obstacles are actually the boundaries when we reposition them up we will spawn enemies and we're gonna call here spawn enemies like this now we're gonna use a random value to determine if we are gonna spawn these enemies so we're gonna say if random dot range from 0 up to 10 if it's greater than 0. Now, first of all, this right here is going to be frequency of spawning enemies. And it's not spelled like this, so it's frequency of spawning enemies. Now, notice here, I set if it's greater than 0. Every time this will be greater than 0. Well, that is 1 by 10 chance that it will not be greater than 0. So it means that every time we will spawn enemies. But if you want to, well, set less chance for enemies to be spawned right away, you can say 5, so that's 50-50 chance for enemies to be spawned. 3, that is 70 by 30 chance for the enemies to be spawned. 7, that is 30 by 70 chance that the enemies will be spawned. But for testing purposes, I'm going to say here zero because we need to test right away if this is actually working. So what we're going to do here, well, first we're going to say int random enemy is going to be equal to a random dot range from zero up to enemies dot length. This will give us a random index from zero up to our array's length because we're going to use our enemies array, this one right here, to spawn our enemies. And on random, we will spawn, well, these enemies. Now, since our flag enemy, so the flag one with the scroll that we created in the previous video, is the only obstacle that needs to be spawned in the middle, and we set that obstacle to be at element, well, zero, so it's at index zero, for all four of our boundaries, the flag is at element zero. Which means that here we can test if our random enemy which is the index, and here we can say random enemy index just so that we don't get confused. So if our random enemy index is equal to zero, then we know that this is the flag enemy, flag enemy. And the flag enemy, here I'm gonna say dash, needs to be spawned in the middle. So what you're gonna do here is you're simply gonna call instantiate, and we're gonna instantiate the enemies, the enemy that's at the random enemy index, and we are gonna instantiate it by using new vector three. So new vector three, like this. Zero for the X, because it needs to be spawned in the middle. Transform that position dot Y for the Y, and three F for the Z axis. And for our rotation, we're gonna say quaternion identity, like this. Let me just hit enter so that it goes right here on this line. Else here, 
if it's not so if the random index is not equal to zero that means that it's not our flag so others or other game objects will be spawned on the left spawner and the right spawner but we will code code that later on now we are going to test our flag if it's actually working so if we go back here hit the play button and if i go here on the scene you see when we respawn our obstacle you see bam here we have and bam and bam and bam every time we will have these obstacles which are the flags that are being spawned right here and when they go down you see when they go down here they will be deactivated so every time they go down they will be deactivated and as you see since i said here if this random range is greater than zero every time we see that enemy is being spawned and the reason for it because from 0 up to 10, that is 1 by 9 chance that we will get something greater than 0. But if you want to spawn enemies less frequently, you can say for example 4, that is 60 by 40 chance that the enemies will be spawned 5, that is 50-50 chance, so on and so forth, you get my point. And here, as I already explained, because our flag is set on index 0, and we want the flag to be spawned in the middle, that's the only obstacle that will be spawned in the middle. And because of that, as I already said, we are doing it like this. So in the else statement right here, we will spawn all our other obstacles, and we will either spawn them here on the right spawner side or on the left spawner side. But before we can actually do that, we need to create these obstacles and program those obstacles, which we will start doing from the next video. So, Fahir here from awesometudes.com. I will see you guys in the next video. Before we end this video, don't forget that you can enroll in my most popular course, Create Your First RPG and First Person Shooter Multiplayer Game in Unity. Link is in the description below. And when you enroll in the course, you will also enroll in my giveaway competition and get a chance to win one of my cool prizes. First place will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place will win iMac 27 inch with 5K Retina display. And third place will win a MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop. Now all you have to do to enroll in the giveaway and get a chance to win one of these cool computers is enroll in the course. Again, link is in the description below.